How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back, and thanks for joining me for the Let's Make a Game for 2018, where we use the RPG Maker MV Engine to make a sim RPG. This is episode 10. All right, well, let's look at some of the comments we got. Do the scrolly thing, scrolling down. Patrick C. would like me to name NPCs after his children. Okay, I'm sure we can fit those in to honor your kids at some point. Mr. Nibbles suggested we change greater than to equal to and to fix a grammar event, which is is a fantastic suggestion. <laughs> After recording that episode, I immediately realized when we have zero pickaxes, it's going to say zero pickaxe. In my head, I was like, oh, I'll just do another else handler, but Nibbles chimed in and said, no, just change it to equal. That'll fix it. So let's do that. Let's just jump into it. There's a couple things I want to do in this episode. I want to change the sprite size for when we go into the world map. It stays small, but when we go into the village, we become a larger sprite as like we're zooming in the camera. I also want to to add event mini label this episode and also maybe do some camera zooming. Let's update some things real quick. If pixel count is equal to one, I don't know, Mr. Nibbles, if we say if pixel count is equal to one, it's gonna say S at the end. You have one pickaxes remaining, otherwise you have multiple. Let's switch these around, cut this here, paste this here, cut this here, and paste this here. Now it'll say if pickaxe count equals one, then you have one, otherwise you have multiple. That works, we just had to swap those two around. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Nibbles. Let's add some event mini labels. All we need to do is add a comment mini label and put the text. So let's just add some mini labels around the map. At the beginning of page one, I'm going to add a comment saying mini label. Mine zero one. You can copy this. I'm going to put it on the top of page two because when we switch pages, I don't want it to disappear. I'll go here and put this in to say village. I wonder if we can use text commands. Let's, let's try this. If I do name two, since we're using the name of an actor to store the value of the name of the village, we can reference if this mini label allows text codes. I think it does. Actor two here. Here we'll put the comment for farm one. This will be four one. Uh, I gotta remember to put it on both pages because we don't want it to disappear. This will be I guess we'll put dock instead of fish farm, dock one. Over here, I'm going to add graveyard. Speaking of the graveyard, Petya011 made a suggestion saying make the graveyard have zombies and skeletons to fight, but we'll keep that in mind. I'm also going to edit the map just a little bit. Hopefully that gives it a little bit more of a natural look. Alright, let's address the problem where we go into town and we're still a little mini sprite. This should be easy. We're just going to change the actor images to the regular one. We'll copy paste this. When we exit the village, the same thing happens except it changes us back into the miniaturized version. And let's test it. We've got quarry one, arm 01, dock 01, default town, mine 01. 
That was pretty seamless. I didn't even notice it. We're full size now while we're in the village. And if we exit, hey, we're little dude again. That's pretty simple. I like it. All right, let's use our village deed. The next thing we want to take a look at is somebody mentioned that we should let the player rename the village in case they accidentally name it something that they don't like, which I've done. I've also, like I said last episode, incorporated a plugin that allows the player to type the name. A new mayor has set up the rights to build a town here. Name your town. Now I can hit the backspace and I can just type letters if I want to. The plugin that I'm using for this, I will put a link in the description below. Most of the plugins that I've tested for 1.6.1 do not work any longer, but some of them still do, kind of. I'll go over the details of this plugin and how to make it work and not crash the game. We'll call this one Drift Town. Now, if I try to rename it again, it'll say this town is named Drift Town. Would you like to rename it? Any of the town or Drift Town is the correct name. We've set this to default to this is the correct name. So if someone's spamming, they don't accidentally rename this. We can rename. We can type in whatever we want. Oh shoot, I didn't want all that at the end, right? Rename the town. Okay, let's get that back off there. So now we can have our, our town named. And if we exit, let's see if it works. Yay, the name of the town on the event mini label updates since we're referencing the name of an actor using the message board. So if you name your town inside the town and you exit it, event mini label will show. Cool, I wanna talk about that plugin a little bit. The plugin I'm using this is Dread's plugin, Dreadwing93. It's Dread's text input. There's several of them, I like this one. It's very simple and easy to use. So instead of using name input processing, we're just using a plugin command. And the plugin command is text input one word. And then the next thing you put in is the name of the actor you wanna use. Since I was already using the name of an actor to, to do this, to store the town, this is what it's for. You select the name of the actor. So I'm using actor two, putting two here. Then you're going to put in the number of characters you want to have. Then you type in show or hide, and this is going to show or hide the face of that actor. You can hide it by typing hide or type in show if you wanted to show it. One thing I did notice, if you use more than 16 characters and you try to rename the town, it can lock up. Even though in the help file it references using pixels or 25 characters or 20 characters, you really can only use 16 now that this is in version 1.6 of MV because it can cause a bug that will lock up the game. But to avoid a game breaking bug, you can only use 16 characters. Oh, there's other name input processing plugins. You can add those if you want. Until I encounter any other issues with this, I'm going to be using Dreadwings. And where I got the plugin is from mvplugins.com slash master list. And I'll put a link in the description below to this specific plugin and also the master list. This is a great place to go for plugins. I wish it had more filtering options. It just organizes them all by alpha. Alphabetical. It does have a search function though, so you can search for keyboard stuff. Let me know which keyboard plugin that you guys are using. So I imagine we should further expand our village building system since we started it here. I would like to see a marketplace first early on so that the player can have a use for the things that he or she is gathering. So I need to find some art or make some art for a marketplace. For this, there's a good website called opengameart.org and with the doodad plugin, you can take pretty much any picture and put it in your game. Now we're just looking for something that's going to fit our art style and is free for use. Searching for market didn't result in anything we can use, so I'm going to browse 2D art. OpenGameArt.org can run slow sometimes. This is sort of a, a crapshoot. We're basically looking at available free stuff to throw into our game if we do not feel like designing the art ourselves. But you should design some of the art, at least some of the art yourself, if not all of it. Even though I'm looking for something very specific, I'm also keeping an open eye or something that I might also want to use in the game. I found some oil painting art that I may use for certain cutscenes. As I mentioned before, it's very important to credit the people you take artwork from and any resources from, whether it's music, art, plugins, credit them. Make sure that you're using the right license. Make sure you have the right license to use it before you just grab it off the internet and put it in your game. You really want to avoid any issues with copyright infringement. When looking for art online using open game art, you can see the license of the thing you're browsing on the left hand side. And I can see that this is a public domain piece of artwork, so I can put this in my game. I'm still going to credit the author. I'm going to put these in the IMG parallaxes. I was unable to find anything that would fit in opengameart.org. Let's try the forums. Johan86 has something halfway decent that we may use temporarily. I'm gonna grab that for now. I'm gonna save this in the IMG doodads dg underscore johanstaticwagon.png. Now that we've got some art for our marketplace, let's press F10 and add that as a doodad. 
I think maybe right here would work fine for now. Let's edit that doodad. And require a switch be on. We actually need to make the switch first. Let's do that. I'm gonna make sure I hit save though. Save and close. If we right click and cancel out, it'll undo anything we place. Let's uh, exit the game. Let's go to our common event for our village building system and create a switch for it. Control switch is going to be market. We don't actually need to turn it on here. We just need to create it so that in the doodads plugin, it knows to look for it. But we will need to turn it on somehow in order for us to see that the thing is working, that it shows and it looks okay in game. For now, when we use the deed, I'm just gonna have it turn on. We could even link it to the same switch if we wanted to, but I do want them to be separate so that the player has to unlock the marketplace. So right now it's on by default and we have to set up our layers and probably use the Unfly's region restrictions. So we'll do that. Let's hit F. 10. We can edit our doodads, mark it opened, require that that be on. We hit escape, but we have to finalize it, yeah, accept our settings. Then hit escape, then hit escape, and then save and close. Now it saves our changes. It's very, you have to be very specific on, if you just press back, it's going to cancel and remove your changes. So we accept the settings, we hit back, we save our settings. Now it's updated and it requires that that switch be on, which we'll turn on when we use this. So there it is. So this is placed in a kind of a weird spot. I think I'm going to allow the player to walk right here but block them from walking in these two spots and also block this entire path so they can only walk up to here we might want to edit this in photoshop i'll let the player walk around the back and block this off i'm going to use yanfly's region restrictions for this i'm going to keep this playing so i can use it as a frame of reference we already have yanfly's region restrictions in but i need to set this up player restrict i want to use let's look at our numbers i like to use 77 for allow and 85 for restrict just some far off region that won't be used for for something else but green to allow the player to go and red to stop the player so i kind of use traffic light colors to help me visualize it i set that up in my region restrictions player restrict will be 85 in fact i do everything restrict with 85 until i specifically need otherwise i just set them up like this now i'm going to paint the regions where i need a block using this as a frame of reference I sort of need to edit this art a little bit to move this guy. I think we're gonna have to edit this in Photoshop. Let's look at how we would do that. So let's open this up in Photoshop. We need to move this guy over a little bit. This is a simple fix. So I just need to decide how far and where I wanna put him. I'm actually gonna get rid of this shadowing, the shading. So I'm gonna use an eraser. Just get rid of whatever I selected. I'm gonna press Control plus to zoom in and get a little bit more detail. I'm going to select this guy with the lasso tool and then take the pointer and now I can freely move him around. I think I'm going to put him right here in the center of these guys. I'm actually going to get rid of his whip too. He doesn't need to have a whip. I don't want my heart guy to be a brutal taskmaster character. We're going to erase that whip. He don't need it. He's got coins in his hand or something. I don't know. And we're going to save this as, I'm actually going to create it as a different file so that I can tell the difference in case I want to go back and use the whip. You can always re-download it. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the doodads, edit my doodads, and actually remove this one completely. So I'll just delete the doodad, return to the layer, Layer list, finish my editing, place a doodad, go to the folder that I created, add the edited one where I want it to be, like that. Now I'll right click or I'll hit escape and then I'll right click, I'll right click. I'm going to edit the doodads. I'm going to edit this one and require that the switch, mark it opened, be on, right click, go up, accept the settings, right click, right click, save and close. Now that's there. And we have our region restriction set up, but we need to reload the game actually. I can get rid of this here. Okay, and let's take a look at our region restrict now and see if it's correct. All right, so it should be off by default. It is, there's nothing there. I hit item. Also, our region restrict will stop us from going to these tiles, even if there's no town there. Now, it kind of seems weird that there's just some tiles you can't walk on, but this stops the player from using the deed and activating the thing, becoming stuck inside of an area that they can't be in. We may change this later. There is a plugin that T let me know about. It lets you change the region with a plugin command. So we can change this region with the plugin command. Maybe we'll add that at some point, or we can just use a blank event that has same as character, just like we did with the thing right here. So yeah, there's nothing there, but if if we use inactivate the deed, both of these things will appear. Here we go. 
But see, this one, I'm not gonna get stuck because even if I land on a spot, there's plenty of directions to get out of. Over here, if I use it in a certain spot inside here, I may get stuck. So I don't want that to happen. We also need to make an event right here and we need to change the layer of this event to below character instead of same level. I may want to bring the entire thing down. I think I'm gonna bring the entire thing down. We'll hit F10, I'll edit the doodads. I wanna change the position and bring it down to right here. I'll hit escape, I'll accept my settings and we will save and close. Now I'm going to edit the region restrict as well. This just feels much better and I'll put an event right here. That's great. And put in a blank event right here. That will be same as character and it can be Traveling merchant. We'll keep it simple for now. What'll it be is what he says. And then we will do our shop processing. And he will sell pickaxes, the standard price. He can sell ore, pool, and meat, salt, fish, and meat, stone, fish, and fish, leather, and leather, wool. And that's it. So let's price meat, fish, leather, and wool. Meat will be 50. Fish will be 50. And we'll hit OK. Let's test out our new setup or any weird discrepancies that need to be changed. We won't be able to go there. We need to change something. We need to change this to require the switch market open to be on or to be here. The reason why I've done the region restrictions here is I don't want the player to stand on this tile and then activate a switch locking the player in this area. And then it's like it will freeze up the game, which we can change later, I suppose. We could also just make an event that when the switch activates, the player can't possibly have free control to be there. So, you know, there's a thousand ways to get around that. But right now, this is fine. Stopping the player from walking right here. Let's go ahead and use the village deed. I'll probably make a story event that changes this so that he just appears when he's supposed to be here. We can walk behind this event, but we can't walk over it or through it. Now it looks really nice here and I kind of like this whole setup and we have a traveling merchant. What'll it be? and we can buy and trade. I wanna change the icon for our gold. I think that's done inside the core engine. Here it is, gold icon. It's using 313. Let's go into our items and take a look at what we wanna replace it with. I think we're using this, so we'll change it to 832. 832. All right, we've done quite a few changes in this episode. We've made it so that we're not mini me when we're inside the village. We've added event mini labels to things. We've installed a plugin that lets us type using the keyboard to name our village. We've set it up so that we can we can rename our village if we put in the wrong name. Using the event mini label, we can see the name of the town that we put when we're on the world map. We've downloaded some new art off of Open Game Art, expanded our credits list. We've meticulously placed and set up an event for our merchant. We have the starting of our basic marketplace. We've had some really cool looking backgrounds that will be used for later. So that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Like the smash button, smash the like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this stuff. If you would like to support what I do on this channel, please do so by backing me on patreon.com slash driftwood gaming. I would really appreciate that patreon.com slash driftwood gaming. If you would like to show your support and interact with us, but you don't have money to throw at us, come hang out on discord. The links in the description. Also, the link will be in the description for the plugins and the master list plugins and open game art. Please put your comments for future episodes in the comments below and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.